So now we're going to go on to something that's a little bit of a contentious issue. And a lot of people don't know this. Hi, I'm Lee from Midi. Um, today you find me at the beautiful Red Hill Fishery down in Monmouth, very close to the England and um, Wales border. I came here a lot in the winter time, sort of through to early spring. The fishing is absolutely fantastic. All the lakes are full to the brim with big F1s, big hard fighting carp, and some tremendous weights are caught throughout the season. I generally only come most of the time during the winter time and then it's mostly pellet fishing for me. A lot of anglers like to fish corn with micros, but I like to fish hard pellets. Four mils, six mils and some micros maybe some days on when it's really hard. Some of the weights in the winter can be phenomenal. The other day, just Sunday, I was on the peg next to me and I actually won the open match with 105 pounds. In that, I only had four carp, so the rest was F1. So I probably had maybe 90 pound of F1s, which by any fishery standards this time of the year is absolutely fantastic fishing. You don't have to feed a lot of bait. The fishing is very technical. It's very tight. You have to be disciplined in what you're doing to get the best out of the pegs that you fish. So, rigs for today. They're very fine, very delicate rigs. Nice, nice type of fishing. This is a this is a 4x14 F1 carbon. It's all 18 mainline, quite robust because you are catching a lot of fish during the winter time. And like I say, it's rubbing over the end of the landing net. It's, this, this rig here is designed for fishing through the water. So we've got a strung out shorting patterns. So we've got number nines to spread down the thing. First, first shot is probably a foot or more from the hook. Um, to an old 12 hook length, to a KM1 18 or a 20 with a band. And during, during the session I'll either put a 4 mil or a 6 mil pellet in there. Generally a 6 mil fishery pellet. Elastic, sounds heavy, 12 to 16, believe me it's very, very forgiving. Very forgiving. Very nice rig for catching through the water, maybe pinging pellets. Poss possibly through a pot. So on to our second rig. Again, same float, same main line, just a different shotting pattern. A tighter bulk to get our bait down quite quickly. Today I moved one of the shots down right up on top of my hook length. Again, an 012 hook length with a KM1 18 or 20. Just to get it down now much quicker, because we have had a lot of small fish problems today, little roach, it's quite warm. It's 14 degrees in the middle of November, unreal, but this is Wales, I suppose. So yeah, that's, that's for getting it down quite quick with a four mil pellet or a six mil pellet in the band. 018, and like I said, we're gonna be lifting and dropping with that one, not like laying the rig in where we have been with the, the rig going through the water, trying to catch through the layers, maybe pinging pellets with a catapult. That has worked to a certain extent today, but potting and sitting and waiting gent uh, patiently, lifting and dropping has been the key to the success today. And like you say, the shotting pattern there dictates how that rig is going to work. Moving that number nine down to on top of the hook length. Yes, I could have fished a shorter hook length, but I still believe you still have that little bit of flexibility with the whole 12 hook length. We can move that shot just back up out of the way, or even move this bulk up, maybe spread it out slightly a bit more, just to dictate what's happening in the peg. 12 to 16 elastic. Again, it sounds quite heavy, but trust me, it really is quite soft. And the more it's used, the better it gets. So now we're gonna go on to something that's a little bit of a contentious issue throughout the country. A lot of anglers use back shots. And these are some of the examples of back shots uh, used for conditions for controlling your float. Again, 4x14 carbon. And here we have one, two, three back shot. This is generally used when you have a facing wind and you're trying to keep a tight line 
for hitting those little sharp dinks you know that that f1s can be famous for and we all have those days where they absolutely do our swedes in because you just cannot hit the bike sometimes generally most days you do start connecting with mostly most fish but this is one of the things that anglers do like i said one two three maybe number eights maybe number nines depending on what you got depending how strong the wind is that's just one example Another example is the 4x14s, two number eight back shot. Again, this is to control the rig. Now we're talking about back shots and we're talking about control. Personally, I don't use back shots. Well, I tell a lie and a lot of people don't know this. I do use a back shot, but it's not control for controlling my rig. On my float there I have a number nine that's level with the top of the bristle. I use this back shot not to control my rig but to set my rig. Now a lot of people don't know this. I use this in conditions like today where when we were fishing early, very early, the conditions were quite blustery. There was a heavy ripple um, and, and personally, if, if your float was dotted down, you wouldn't see it. So that, that, that number eight, that number eight or number nine that I use there, depending again, depending on how heavy the wind is or how bad it is. When it's blustery, you can just move it up out of the way. And then what you have then is an extra five, maybe six mil of bristle. So you can see your float then in the ripple without having to change your float, without having to go to a bigger float or a bigger bristle. And the amount of times I've seen people fish in and they've said after the match, I was catching really well and when the ripple came on, I couldn't see my float. And then the sun came round and I really couldn't see it, so it just got worse. But by having that shot there, above your float, you can just move it out of the way when the ripple comes on and you're fishing with a little bit of extra float show. When it goes flat calm like it has now, and there's fish topping everywhere, and it's like a glass bottle, you can drop it back down to the top of the bristle, like there, and all that does, it just dots it back down to a dimple again. So basically, you can use one float, with the same show, or different show, sorry, with your back shot. I'm not using my back shot to set to, to control my float, I'm using it to set my float. So I've got maximum control over that float, as well as being able to see it properly during the session. You know, if the light's not quite favorable or the sun comes around a bit and sometimes you just can't quite see it because of reflections or whatever. Reflections on waters in winter time are generally a lot worse than what they are in summer. Give that shot in a go. It's only a little thing. Slot shot that we use at MIDI. They move up and down the line lovely. It doesn't damage your line one little bit. You can push it back all the way up to your top of your knot. It's out the way. And you're fishing again with a little bit more float show. Fantastic. Give it a go. One of the other advantages of using a shot underneath the float and above the float, twofold really, everything is kept quite tight but it's also a very good marker if you like me I like everything to be spot on when I'm fishing after I've plumbed up I want everything nice so I know where everything is very methodical in the way I fish and again with the shot that we use to set our float at the top so we've got our shot at the float at the top of the float one at the very bottom and for argument's sake if we actually pull out of a fish and our float moves up the line, like I generally do, pull out odd fish during a match, those shot are a very good guide. They very rarely move. The slot shot from MIDI stays on the line very, very well. It stays in place fantastically well. One of the other things 
Well, I do. When I pl when I plumb up. And this is one of the things that I do. So we've plumbed up. So we've got our rig all set up, shotted nicely as we've been fishing during the day. So we've come to mark our depth. Now a lot of people would be happy just sticking the hook in the base of the, the top kit. A little bit of elastic out, like I say, this is quite soft. They get their tip X and they just mark the top of the top kit. Yeah, or it may be you're not going to be far away. But to have it absolutely perfect, just take it out of the top kit. Dacron connector. Just put it parallel side of your, your top kit. And just mark your float. It cannot be wrong. There is no way that it could be, could be wrong. Because there's no tension. The elastic is not under tension. So it's not stretching the line. And the elastic can come, sometimes stick inside the pole if you pull it down. And it's not in the same place twice. By doing it this way, you're ensuring you're 100% accurate every single time. Our session at Red Hill has been quite an interesting one, really. Today I've sat on the peg next to where I fished on Sunday, where I won the Open match. I've had a weight of £105 on Sunday, but the fishing has been very, very difficult today. Yes, we've caught some fish, we've caught some nice fish. No carp caught, but just some F1s. And not really any of the big F1s that we normally associate the lakes for. They've been the smaller stamp. Whether that's something to do with the weather, the weather's on the change. I mean, like I said, it's 14 degrees to the middle of November. It's absolutely unheard of this time of the year. So, so today has been quite difficult, as, we, as we've said. And um, we've, we've attacked it on, on two, two lines. And we've, we've fed them differently. We've put some... Some micros in and some four mils on one line and some just, just some four mils in on another line. The, the line that we put some micros in, we've had loads and loads of indications, but no, no proper bites. And I think that was the wrong thing to do maybe, because when we've gone onto the four mil fed line, and I fed, fed these lines at 10 o'clock and two o'clock on a clock face. I mean, today we've had the luxury of, of doing that. Some days you don't have that obviously because you, you haven't got a lot of room on these commercials sometimes with the pegging and the number of the people that fish them. So yeah, today we've had a little bit of room. We've gone 10 and two. And like I said, we've started at 10. We've caught some fish. It's been a little bit, little bit funny at times, but there's been fish there. And I'm sure if I'd have just stayed on one line, I would have probably caught a few more. And then we have moved over to the two o'clock line where I previously fed with just four mil pellets. And we have fed that just with a pot. And we have caught some nice fish. We've, we've got them to feed and settle properly. So when you go to these venues in the winter, yeah, you could take your corn, your bread, your maggots, but take some pellets with you and put them on a separate line somewhere. And like I say, look at the rigs I've used today. You won't go far wrong with what I'm using. You don't have to fish heavy. You may surprise yourself by what you actually catch on pellets during the winter. It's not just a summer and autumn bait. It's a very good winter bait. Get out on the bank and give them a go sometime. Look forward to seeing you soon.